Hey everyone, this is Pharaoh Silver, the Pharaoh of Beer Money Finance, back with another video. Uh, this was originally going to be a round table, but I thought, you know, the only person that was able to be available for today because of such short notice regarding challenges was myself. I just make this a one on one interview because I really wanted to bring this guy along. Th this guy has been like one of my, oh, I, I call him, him alongside the Board Game Sports Network like two of the most underrated channels on YouTube, in my opinion. And I wanted to bring him on. This is Bronze Dragon Gaming. Welcome to the stream, Bronze Dragon channel. Oh, channel. <laughs> hi. Thanks for having me coming on. Yeah. Uh, so Yeah, the channel is Bronze Dragon Gaming. but Bronze Dragon Gaming, know. yeah. So uh, how, about, how about talk about yeah. your, uh, your channel? Okay, well, uh, my channel really spawned a little bit more than two years ago from the game Splinterlands, um, and that's a Web3 game on the Hive blockchain. It's a card. It's a collectible card game, um, auto-battler type. You, cl you collect cards, you level them up, you, um, you are presented with a, each hand is different, um, and you have to select the cards you want to put in, how much mana you're going to use, et cetera. Anyway, that's where my, um, my channel started. And I've been covering Splinterlands for, I've been playing Splinterlands for a little bit over three years. I've been covering it on the site for about two years. And it has, uh, my, my channel has slowly um, expanded to a lot of different other games on the the high blockchain as well as uh atlas earth uh play to earn and a few other blockchain type games so i'm pretty wide open there so is your focus more on like play to earn games kind of gaming or web3 kind of gaming or both or uh my main focus is web3 uh i have started playing atlas earth over the last a little about six and a half months um and it is the primary play to earn game that uh i play and it's the only one i've done coverage on on my channel thus far that's a hat so uh so regarding atlas earth how did you find it like it's not really web3 it's it is basically a play to earn but it's not really web3 i'm kind of curious how you found the game uh, surfing YouTube, I believe. Uh, I believe that, um, I get up there early in the morning before work and I work out and that's when I watch my YouTube videos. And I generally have a wide search parameter on my YouTube videos. Um, and I just watch videos about gaming and stuff. Um, and I think I either came up, uh, it was probably one of your videos that I came across. Um, but I heard somebody mention it in a video more than likely. And I just went and checked it out. Um, that's how I oh, found wow. out about it. <laughs> wow, I'm uh, I'm I'm sur I'm kind of flattered about that actually because everyone's been telling me about like with Atlas Earth they find they find my videos, but it's like I'm pretty sure there's got to be someone on there because I found Atlas Earth from another. I think it was from an advertisement I found on Facebook a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It was uh, like I wasn't quite like day two like AJ, but I was definitely uh, I'd say month two, month three, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, for this one, we were going to talk about the monthly challenges and, uh, mm -hmm. this one was a pretty interesting, like there's been a lot of controversy, I think talking about the monthly challenges, like a lot of people were not very happy with how the monthly challenges are going to pretty much involve spending money. But, um, mm -hmm. I want to know what your thoughts were on the monthly challenges. I know I I've seen your video on it. Um, uh, on the monthly challenges and you know after doing your own calculations after doing your own strategies uh you came across uh what did you decide on the premium pass first off i guess well that's a funny story because i came okay so the, the day before uh the challenges went live which was the last day um of october my intent was to subscribe okay so i came home from work, I got ready. I was doing a video which included reasons why I'm going to subscribe, uh, looking at the numbers as far as what you can earn. This is before it went live and we learned what the actual pass is. Uh, this is after they had um, released the charts, which seemed like it was a little bit, a lot more wide open than what it is very restricted now. Okay, we can get into that. But, um, Anyway, I was looking at the numbers and I did the numbers. And I'm like, well, hey, I can make this work, right? Um, but that was with the um, 
that was with me thinking I was going to have uh, access to all the challenges and just do whatever I wanted. Right. That it was going to be limited down. Uh, and in that case, I figured, hey, it was going to be worth it. So I went in and I did my video, presented my case, and um, I subscribed. But then, uh, and I, I, I usually do my videos, and then I'll go and have dinner with my wife, and I'll come back and edit them. Uh, I came back, and I saw this message uh, in Discord from Manning, Mod Manning, and uh, he said that uh, if you subscribed on the last day of the month, and it wasn't before like 5 a.m. or something like that on that day, then your subscription was going to be good for December and not November. And frankly, that teed me off a little bit because I didn't know there was uh, that was going to be in play. But he apologized for it, you know. Um, so I went in and I went ahead and I removed my subscription. I just turned it off since uh, since my strategy for November is going to be vastly different than what my strategy for December is. So, um, yeah. So it, it was interesting, and I immediately uh, pinged you on Discord just to make sure after i did the video i thought i was wrong on something and i just wanted to double check that i was wrong right. and um that's why i pulled i immediately pulled right. the video down <laughs> i had like 20 people watching the video and i'm like uh, i did a part of my next video i'm like uh sorry that you were watching the video and i pulled it down i just don't i like to double check my um my facts and i don't like to uh, put out incorrect information. So I, I am the same way. I try to double check everything before I send it out to people. And sometimes I do get it wrong. And there are a lot of people who like to tell me that I get it wrong, even after the fact when they've already changed it after I made the video. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, um, but you gotta be feeling, I, I mean, we found out that the monthly challenges are going to be kind of gated in a way. So we are just given like... 10, they are very yeah, gated. Yeah, the 10, the first 10 challenges. And then once you finish one, another one pops up. It wasn't like a total mm -hmm. gating where it's like, okay, you have to do a certain amount of challenges before the next one comes up. But it is one at a time. Um, so, for Correct. example, if you want to get to level two for uh, boosting on your non-SRB... Well, you can't go there until you finish not just level one non SRB, but like a host of other topics as well beforehand. Correct. Yeah. So, um, and this is what we learned after it went live. Right. So, so um, so I know that uh, you and I both uh, did subscribe on the last day of the month, but I think in hindsight, I'm kind of happy that uh that we didn't have to worry about that now. <laughs> now that we've seen that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. In hindsight, that was a uh, a good uh, mistake on my part. Or yeah. However, it turned out it was uh, fortuitous. Yeah, for, for me, it was more of an experiment. And this was right before Manning said that uh, the October 31st was going to be for next month. It was like literally 20 minutes before he made that announcement. But oh. I did this because I wanted to experiment and talk about it on the channel on Saturday. And so it said, oh, no, it's for next month. And I was like, oh, well, then that's fine, because I was planning on doing this in December. I was only going to do it in November 1 because... Um, I like Manning's vision of Atlas Earth. Uh, Manning's vision of Atlas Earth is actually the exact vision that I had talked about in my early videos that Atlas Earth should have gone. And we'll get to and we'll get to why this will be a good segue to what we'll talk about in a little bit um, regarding Web three, because a lot of people wanted Atlas Earth to go into Web three. But um, going back to this, I wanted them to become a rewards app, and I'm glad that he followed that vision. And Atlas Earth is yeah. doing gangbusters now because of it uh second the other the other thing is that um i wanted to see what it was like too i mean there's the te there's that temptation i have that psychological temptation it affects me as well that you want to be a part of it but ooh boy yeah seeing it now i'm like well i'm quite happy about that <laughs> well um uh let me just state yeah. this uh i'm fine with it because uh it's free atlas Box, right right you're you're going to be doing this stuff uh, for the challenges anyway. Um, now, the question is, and we discussed this uh, yesterday yeah. a little bit. Uh, the question is, do you want to press yourself to do stuff that's outside of your normal activity uh, to be able to earn the challenges? That's the question, because uh, like you mentioned, what I agree is that if you subscribe, you're going to press yourself to, to, to max out everything as much as you possibly can. As soon as I saw the charts, 
I, I knew to myself, there's no way from my usual behavior and my usual play style um, that I would g- be able to in, um, earn the end rewards, uh, the, the, the legendary upgrade and the badge. There's no way I'm going to get up to 2,500 points. So maybe once or twice a year, maybe I do it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think that from my perspective, after I play it for a month or two, I'll have a much better idea of how it's going to roll. But you also have to keep in mind that they've already stated up front, these are going to change. The challenges are going to change. It's very interesting. Um, There's a couple of the players on Discord that are putting together the spreadsheet of the challenges and how they stack up in order and how they're going to come up on your list, right? But December is probably going to be completely different because they've already said that. Right. I mean, that's because of the mini games too, because... I really don't like that they're gating the mini games like this. Honestly, that they're doing like the mini games. Uh, want it like you have to play these mini games in order to progress. If any sort of amount of progression in in this, I don't know. It just yeah. annoys me a little bit that that's mm-hmm. happening. Well, I know you are on the side of liking uh, to play mini yeah. games. I think. Um, but I'm on the opposite side. Now, today we have a bowling mini game right. coming up, and I'm going to have to force myself to try and play these, which I've had no luck whatsoever with in the past, and I've kind of just written them off of... Um, I just don't even pay attention to them. But due to the new challenges, I'm going to have to at least try... Try to win um, two. You know, exactly. Yeah, I mean, winning two would be the goal in this sense. So I, I get it. I would just win two and then like lose the rest, mulligan, get your threes and, you know, get back to even that way. Um, that was that would be my strategy for you personally uh, regarding that. Um, but no, I, I understand that like, a lot of people are not happy that they're basically forced to play the mini games in order to progress. Um, I don't like how the mini games are just kind of locked. So if I'm not feeling it tonight, if I don't feel like playing bowling, which I I'll be honest with you, I kind of was not. <laughs> well, I don't have a choice now. Yeah, <laughs> I have to at least go for top five hundred. So, yeah. uh, but other, overall, how's your progress going in Atlas Earth though? Six months in, like your parcel count. Okay, that that is an interesting uh, topic because November was going to be a it, it's going to be a big month right. for me, and I'm not going to release exactly what I'm doing, but I have been sitting at two hundred and twenty parcels. Since um, August 31st, okay? Mm -hmm. And I will be putting out a video this coming week uh, on what I'm I'm going to take a big action in game. And I'm not going to put it out right now because I want to have it happen and uh, get what I'm going to get out of it before I tell everybody about it. Yeah, make that big video. Make that big video, man. (laughs) I've been playing and I've been having fun. It's just I've been saving... uh, for a particular action I'm going to take this week since the end of August. Um, and, you know, I've been doing uh, videos on, you know, various changes that have come into the game and things of this nature. So um, I'm sitting at 220. Uh, I've been sitting at that tier for quite a while. Um, and I'm at 15% uh, badge boost. Um, just I was just basically following Tasty Wallet's uh, lead, you know, right. as far as what he put. Now, um, this new system coming into play, you know as well as I do, I started question, uh, throwing some questions at you. I was trying to make this new system work with what I'm going to do in November, which involves buying some parcels of land. And the the rewards or the challenges, the rewards for the challenges are strongly gated. So um, one of my thoughts is, and... I know Manning uh, said that it didn't play into it in Discord, but one of the side effects of this new challenge system is that um, it's kind of, it's anti-tier jumping, okay? So it is uh, trying to get people to buy parcels of land more frequently um, than waiting for massive tier jumps. So uh, it's going to make it harder on me, and I probably won't be able to, with what I'm going to do, I'm probably not going to be able to soak in much of those points from the actual buy a parcel. Um, But it'll be what it is. Would you be able to, because I know that you're on 15% boost right now on badges, um, you probably should be at the point right now where you're going to be getting the city and state badge stuff. 
and you are and and do you live near another like okay are you living in a in a town that is at least like relatively like an hour drive away from another state oh yeah i work uh i live outside of philadelphia and i work in new jersey so okay so most of, uh, all all of my parcels have been bought uh around my home though so well uh regarding the badges do you have both the pennsylvania and new jersey state badges That's a good question. I do have a Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to yeah, check. Yeah, if you don't have the New Jersey badge, then, you know, this would be like an opportunity for someone, in my opinion, if you're taking the premium pass, this would be the opportunity for someone who might be close to a state, or might be close to another city to go get those badges if they're not at 25% already. That's how I'm feeling. So maybe that might be something that you could look at if you want to do that. But because you're not on the premium pass this month, like myself, I personally see it as we just take the free Atlas bucks and move on because the amount of Atlas bucks you get yeah. on the free tier are just not worth having to go so far out of your way. And, and this is what I should was yeah. going to see on the stream, uh, but I forgot with AJ. But um, I feel like the free tier bucks are so low. Now, if you got the premium pass, yes, you want to go out of your way to make it worth it. But this is free yeah. Atlas bucks. And this is what I'm trying to explain yeah. to people is that I know a lot of people are complaining about this, but it's like, you got to realize this is a win, win, win for everyone. You get free Atlas bucks. Even if you just did, uh, let's say, even if you just did the boosting and you got to like level one, that is five more Atlas bucks than you got last month. Yep. Oh, I right? agree. That's five more. That That's two less ads you have to see. Maybe three. I don't know. Or five if you're global. Okay. You know, that that's, that's a win in my opinion. It is better for vendors because it allows vendors to see Atlas Earth as a more attractive option to market their product. Mm -hmm. Definitely, which is what the game's based yeah, on. Yeah, and I think, and, and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well, and actually very soon. And it's also and it's also great for Atlas Earth because it adds stability to the game. And I think that's what mm -hmm. people got to realize Definitely. when they're complaining. It's like, yes, I'm aware that you're not going to get that legendary parcel upgrade. Very few will. But the entire point is that this that they came up with a product that is a win 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 for everyone, even if you're not going to win the whole thing. You're not. No one here is going to become president. None of us on in Beer Money Network is going to become a pre, is going to become the president. Um, yeah. I think I think it'll be like someone like a Maximus or a Shaman that does it. But overall, you know, if you're here to make money, you don't want to win. You want to get the most that, that you can out of it and earn the most that you can out of it, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. leads me to the question, how how do you like Atlas Earth compared to the other Web3 games? Like Atlas Earth kind of runs on a style of they are sourced, they source their money mostly from vendors who advertise their products from Atlas Earth to you guys rather than Web3, which seems to be more along the lines of trying to get users to invest in the game or something like it seems like anyway at least that's how i saw it when i was playing games like upland and coin yeah i mean um from a pure profit driven perspective yeah atlas earth is better okay their their framework is better okay i play web3 games from the aspect of i really think that web3 is the next generation of where gaming is headed OK, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll just I'll just throw this argument at you. Um, we've all played games in the past where you've sunk hours and hours, hundreds of hours into it. And there's a lot of very popular games out there where you buy stuff, skins and whatnot, weapons and things like that. You're never going to own those. Right. OK, so people throw hundreds of millions of dollars. It's a proven business, you know, um, mm -hmm. and I won't mention any uh, big names, but they make millions of dollars selling skins and things. And uh, if that company um, decides to turn off that game, you're just out that money. OK, the same thing applies in Web3, but the assets. Um, well, let me give you a prime example. The, one of the reasons why I got into Splinterlands is because I used to be back in the day a Magic the Gathering player. OK, and I amassed a large collection, which I uh, initially uh, eventually sold off uh, in the late 90s to buy a motorcycle, which I shouldn't. But that's another story. Um, but one of the problems with a physical card game is that if you want to be able to buy, sell, trade, you have to go down to the local shop or you have to put up with scams on eBay and things like that. And it's rather difficult. OK, 
when those assets are turned into NFTs, and I know NFTs get a bad rap, right? They are easily bought, sold, and traded uh, through the game, okay? That's what attracted me to it. Now, uh, initially, there was a promise, and there are people that are able to make money off these games. From what I've seen, initially it is, it's like buy in at the very beginning and sell some off. Um, but this game I play has been around for about four, five years now, I maybe six. Um, but it's not really going anywhere. Is there always a possibility of a company going out of business? Sure. Um, from the pure profit uh, making, uh, Atlas Earth has it, okay? Because I've bought a lot of cards, but then again, in play Magic the Gathering, you have to buy a lot of cards and so forth. Um, and I could sell those off, you know, but uh, as far as pure profit, uh, I think that I'm making more off of Atlas Earth on a weekly basis than I am off of Splinterlands. Uh, so a couple things I think regarding the gaming for the gaming parts of Web3 just in general, like like you, I actually am sympathetic towards Web3. I do think that there is a future in it. I do think it has its place. Um, where I, there are just two issues that I have regarding Web3. And the first one being that, yes, it's true. We have microtransactions with other games, non Web3 games out there where you have to pay five or $10 for the cosmetic for a particular weapon for an FPS game or like a particular item that you need for an RPG. And you're having to pay money based off of that. The, where where I feel like the issue is, though, with Web3 is that uh, especially, and this happened especially during like 2021, 2022, and what you would have is like some of these games would get into astronomical levels of pricing to a point where if you just slapped the label NFT on something, it instantly became 100 times more expensive. And I mm -hmm. felt like, and I felt like while I get that everything was kind of monetizing gaming long before Web3 came out, it just got a little ridiculous with Web3 is what I felt like. Oh, I agree. I agree. Um, that, that's the first issue that I've had. And the second issue is that I feel like a lot of the, the game quality of Web3 games that I've seen, especially during the time two, three years ago, was not great. Um, they're clearly well, inferior. Um, Even Atlas Earth, a play to earn. I game. Just, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to. I just want to expand yeah. on that because I've been covering it for a number of years yeah. now, and the games when it first started out a few years ago were very basic, and they were not attractive games uh, unless you were trying to make money off them. They were games that we were playing on computer back in the nineties. Right. That they were uh, that small development teams we're finding a way to um, mesh these older type games, which were easy to, to develop compared to newer style games. You also got to remember that these games are running on a shoestring budget. Uh, very, some of these games, uh, I cover a few games that have two people working on them, you know? Um, so it's going to take a very, you got very limited manpower to work on these games. Either way, uh, at the very beginning uh, and up to the last year or two, um, they were very simple games, like I said, that we were playing back in the 80s and 90s, that they found a way to mesh with what was new and upcoming blockchain technology, which is a whole different other discussion. But I agree with you. Very simple games. And there's a lot. There's hundreds of them out there that I choose. Um, if I look at a new project and it's like, if I don't want to play it, if it's not appealing, I'm not going to cover it, right? So, um, yeah, but uh, here's what, what, what I was leading up to is lately uh, and last uh, six months or so, the gaming has um, bigger companies are latching on to this, putting a lot more development dollars into these games um, that are linked to blockchain. And this is what I'm seeing as the evolution. However, these games are much different. These games are on the larger scale, and the companies are developing their own uh, wallet apps with them. Um, and so they don't have to go out to any of the major blockchains, which is another big issue, uh, uh, cluttering up the blockchains with so many transactions that they slow down and et cetera. But a lot of these new ones also have uh, what we've come to know as um, 
a glut of microtransactions, a gotcha style, um, largely Korean, um, Chinese style games oh, yeah. where <laughs> they throw a lot of a lot of purchases at you. So, yeah, theoretically, there are um, theoretically you could make money off the game. But in most reality, in the big picture, when you look at it, most of us, uh, you know, the, the gaming culture over there is much different than here it is in, in the United States. Right. Um, I don't have, um, you know, if I have an hour or two during the evening to play a game, that's probably the most I have. Some other people in the world, they play a game 24 seven for, you know, work. That's not me. So you I think it all comes down to if you're thinking about playing a game, first of all, it has to be attractive to you as a game. OK, I uh, everything that I do on my channel is approach as a game, not approach as an investment, because a lot of these games, um, you know, even Atlas Earth, I'm free to play. You know, uh, I have never specifically bought parcels. OK, now I've taken part in everything else. I play the games once in a while. I go out and I frequent the amp model and uh, various things like that. But I'm approaching it like a game. So, yeah, and I know that's a lot. No, I, I, no, I get it. Actually, I think we've gone way deeper than I thought that we were going to with Web three because I was saving this for another uh, for another roundtable. Oh, I could people. I could talk for two hours. Oh, well, you might actually have a chance to <laughs> next month. We will definitely get to that, and act and probably I'll save the talk about like the bigger companies making their own wallets for that video as well, yep. because they because in my opinion that does kind of solve some of the issues regarding MetaMask and stuff that I feel like has been not very intuitive. Yeah. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Uh, we're we're about to we're about out of time. Uh, any final words regarding uh, regarding like. Uh, you know, it was great to be here, actually, and great to. Uh, I'm going to edit that out. I'm sorry. <laughs> it it was great to be here. No. <laughs> it was great to have you here, though. Seriously, I I thought you were. This has been a great interview, and I've been enjoying and I've been enjoying this. And I'm actually hoping that I can learn a lot more about Web three through your channel. So. Well, uh, I've had fun in this conversation. Um, thanks for inviting yeah. me. Uh, I'm looking forward to our future conversations. I'm looking forward to continuing to play Atlas Earth. And uh, when we next speak, we'll be able to talk about uh, my major move, which uh, may or may not involve taking mayor. Oh, yeah, that, that'll be fun. And yeah, you're going to be part of the regular uh, rotation of the roundtable as well, which I'm very excited about, by the way. Uh, alongside myself, AJ, SSC Kelly, um, once in a while, uh, DJ Guardian does show up pretty frequently as well. Um, Tasty Wallet shows up fairly frequently as well. So yeah, it's going to be a great roundtable when we talk about Web3. And of course, you know, it doesn't even just have to be on Web3 topics as well. If you come by stuff like we talk finance, we're not a gaming, this is not a gaming channel. And I want to, and I want to make that clear. We are more, a, I'm more a channel educating people on how to make money through rewards apps and using that money, turn it into an investment portfolio. But just yeah. that Atlas Earth kind of brings this perfect fusion is a big reason why we can have interviews like this. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and Atlas Earth is morphing. Yeah. Uh, has made a lot of changes over the last year. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I cannot wait to see you again on the round table. So. Okay. Well. Thanks and have a yeah, good one. Go check out his YouTube channel, Bronze Dragon Gaming, if you want more information on Web3 stuff, uh, Web3 Gaming, and of course, Atlas Earth as well. And he will be back on the round table this month as we talk about Web3 and a variety of other topics as well. So I cannot wait to see you there. Uh, this is Pharaoh Silver. If you like this video, please give it a like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe to both of our channels. Uh, again, leaving a link on the description at the very top. And I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.